What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news and updates. Of course, it is a Thursday, so we get Bungie's weekly Twid update. And this week in Destiny, they talk about the upcoming Prismatic subclasses, and we actually get some gameplay previews for them. So we'll talk about those and show off some of the new stuff. But Bungie also talk about exotic class items for the final shape, how we're going to earn them, how some of the perks will work, and details on the perk descriptions. So that's also pretty cool. Plus, they touch on the return of Zero zero hour and accessibility for the free content, including details of whether items that we earn in the free expansions and seasons at the moment will carry over to the final shape, which spoiler alert, but they will. So that's good news. And there are a bunch of other things to round up today as well. So as always, guys, I hope you find the video useful, but without further delay, let's get into it. And firstly, we have had three different gameplay previews for Prismatic in the final shape. So there's about a minute long video for each of the classes. And we get a bunch of gameplay of different classes popping Prismatic and using elements of various subclasses. Prismatic seems to have a reasonably generous timer, plus we spot additional things like Stasis Frost Armor, which we don't know a lot about yet. And there are some new weapons, what looks like a rocket sidearm in the Warlock PvP clip. And you'll even notice in some of the gameplay, a new Nightfall in the Pale Heart, where we need to activate the Ahamkara skulls with Taken Energy, and a boss called Tormentor of the Ahamkara, which is very interesting. So loads of cool stuff to take a look at. And without interruption, here are the gameplay segments from today. So let us know your initial impressions there, guys. But next, Bungie talk about exotic class items, which of course will tie into Prismatic. And they say these special additions to Destiny 2 will feature two random exotic perks from a selection of existing exotic armor perks, including some that belong to classes other than yours. So 
In terms of earning the class items, they say they'll be part of a new activity that unlocks after the raids world first at the beginning of week two, and they don't want to spoil what the activity is all about or how to unlock it, but they do confirm that it's farmable and will get guaranteed random rolls every time we complete it. So that sounds pretty cool, and they've said, similar to how Prismatic has a selection of abilities among all light and darkness classes, the exotic class items will have a mix of exotic armor perks available for each class. They've included some fan favorites as well as some perks that aligned with charismatic abilities and aspects, with a focus on allowing for combinations that feel powerful and complementary, and in many cases they say we've adjusted the perks to work with a broader array of abilities. For example, Spirit of Caliban on the Hunter Cloak works with all powered melees, not just proximity knife. It's a bunch of kind of bending the rules here, and now they reveal what perks we'll actually be able to roll on each of the class items. So, for the Hunter's Exotic Cloak, Essentialism, the Spirit of the Assassin in the first column, where finishers and powered melee final blows grant invisibility ability, with Spirit of the Star Eater in the second column, and while your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, granting it bonus damage. Slot 1 can also get Spirit of Inmost Light, and using an ability empowers the other two abilities, granting them improved energy regeneration, then Slot 2 can get Spirit of Syntheseps, which gives improved melee damage when surrounded. Plus Spirit of the Ophidian, where weapons ready very quickly, and Spirit of Verity, where weapon final blows with a damage type matching your grenade grant a stacking grenade damage bonus. Then there is Spirit of the Dragon, and using your class ability reloads all weapons and increases weapon handling speeds for a brief time, and Spirit of the Cytorachne, where we can gain woven mail when we use a grenade. Plus we have Spirit of Galanor, and hits and final blows with your super will return super energy after it ends. Spirit of the Gaia Falcon, where void weapons gain volatile rounds after you emerge from being invisible. Then for Foe Tracer, damaging a powerful combatant or guardian with an ability grants you a temporary damage bonus for weapons matching that ability's element. Plus Spirit of the Liar, where dealing damage with a powered melee or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counterpunch. Then we've got Caliban, where powered melee final blows trigger an ignition. Wormhusk, where dodging gives a small health and shield bump. Renewal, where allies inside of the Dusk Field take reduced damage damage and targets inside the area deal reduced damage, and Spirit of Coyote, where we gain an additional class ability charge. Then for the Titan mark, Stoicism, as you can see, Spirit of Assassin, Star Eater, Inmost Light, Syntheseps, Ophidian and Verity will still be a thing, then the Spirit of Severance, and Powered Melee or Finisher Final Blows unleash a damaging explosion, and Spirit of Contact, where damaging a target with a Powered Melee causes all nearby enemies to suffer lightning strikes and become jolted, then the Spirit of Hoarfrost, and your barricade becomes a wall of stasis crystals that slows nearby targets when created, Spirit of Scars, and Final Blows with weapons that have a damage type matching your supers element create a burst of healing around you that grants alloys restoration, plus Spirit of Eternal Warrior and we gain a damage bonus for weapons matching your super's element when the super ends. Spirit of the Horn, where Barricade unleashes a blast of solar energy that scorches targets. Then Abeyant, which improves Drenger's Lash, and projectiles track targets more aggressively. Alpha Loopy, which generates a healing pulse when Barricade is activated. Then the Spirit of the Bear, and we can move faster while guarding with the Unbreakable Shield, and damage blocked with it is converted to super energy. And finally Armamentarium, where you gain an additional grenade charge. Then for the Warlock's Bond, Solipsism, we get the Assassin, Star Eater, Inmost Light, Syntheseps, Ophidian, and Verity perks, as well as Spirit of the Stag, where Rift provides damage reduction to allied guardians standing in it, as well as Vespa, where Rifts periodically release arc shockwaves. Then we have Filaments, where casting an empowering Rift will grant you Devour, Spirit of Harmony, where final blows with weapons that have a damage type matching your super's element grant you super energy. Necrotic, where damaging combatants with your melee poisons them, and defeating a poisoned enemy spreads the condition. As well as Starfire, where grenades recharge from empowered weapon damage, with empowered weapon final blows granting more energy. Osmiomancy, where grenades recharge quicker on hits, and the Seeker spawned from cold stamp grenades will travel further. Then we've got the Swarm, where destroying a tangle spawns Threadlings. Apotheosis, where we temporarily gain greatly increased melee and grenade regen after Super's end. And Spirit of the Claw, where we gain an additional melee charge. And Bungie finally say all of the exotic class item perks will only work when you have Prismatic equipped. But otherwise, in the final shape, there'll be some buffs that impact both the original exotic armor perks and the Spirit versions. And they say some of the 
perk combos might end up being better than we expect. So I think those sound pretty cool. And it's certainly going to be nice to actually get to try them out in the game. Give us your thoughts down below. Otherwise, in the Twit, Bungie talk about the daily red border weapons that we're going to get access to in seasonal activities up to the final shape and the launch of Zero Hour next week. So that will drop on May 14th. And they say it will be a 40 minute timer on normal and a 20 minute version on legend with the craftable version of Outbreak Perfected drop in. And they say there'll be some secret chests available each week to also unlock some new additional perks. And for players who already have the catalyst, we'll be able to craft it immediately. But the legend difficulty will drop the catalyst as well for players who haven't picked it up previously. So let us know if you're looking forward to Zero Hour next week. And lastly, Bungie talk about the free content that's been made available in terms of the expansions and the seasons from the past year. And importantly, they do confirm that any items that we earn while playing the free stuff will remain unlocked on our accounts indefinitely. So that's a big positive. And when Final Shape launches, the campaigns for Shadowkeep and Beyond Light, along with the Stasis subclass, will remain available to all players at no additional cost. So some really positive info there, guys. For today, that pretty much sums up the twap. So there we go. I did it again. It's the twid. But give us your thoughts in the comment section. Apologies for my voice. Got a bit of a sore throat and I'm really struggling today. So I hope you've been able to put up with it. If you have found the video useful, though, a rating really does help us out down below. And otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day.